Good evening, brothers. Um, it is a tremendous privilege uh, for me, but also um, a great personal joy uh, for me to have the opportunity to introduce the man that we honor uh, this evening. You know, in the same way that in your chapters there are guys that you really look up to, that you admire, that you learn from, and you just love to hang out with, well, there are a lot of volunteers in this room tonight that fit that category, and none better than Brother Chuck Stegman. I've known Brother Stegman for a little while. Uh, it was uh, mid-May of 1981, uh, almost 40 years ago, when he and I were both the age that you seniors are today, and it was in a parking lot in Lawrence, Kansas. And I'll tell you more about why that's where we met in just a moment. Chuck was there because he'd come to the attention of Sigma Phi Epsilon as an undergraduate at his home chapter, Colorado Alpha at the University of Colorado in Boulder. His chapter, like many in those years, in the late 1970s and early 80s, was going through a very difficult transition culturally and in other ways. And Chuck Stegman, as an undergraduate, demonstrated a remarkable ability to drive change in his chapter, to help it reach heights it had not known before. He had, as an undergraduate, a vast intelligence and a passion for the fraternity and the ability to lead men to do better things and to lead the organization itself far better for having had his involvement, and Sigep noticed that. And so Sigep asked him to become a regional director. And that's why he drove from Boulder to Lawrence, where I went to school and where one of my closest friends, a guy named Craig Templeton, who later became the executive director of our national fraternity, had also been hired as a regional director. So it was in the parking lot of the Kansas Gamma Chapter House at uh, 1645 Tennessee Street in Lawrence, where I first met this guy, Chuck, and I don't think either one of us had any idea how our lives would intermingle and our paths would later cross. But it's fair to say that Chuck was a phenomenal regional director. In fact, he was so good that he was asked to return to Richmond to our national staff, where he was given one of the most important jobs that we can give a professional staff, which is the director of chapter, new chapter expansion. So quite literally, the entire future of our fraternity was put in his hands, and he excelled in that role as well. When he left the National Fraternity staff, he moved to Northern California, where he started working in tech positions before anyone had heard the phrase Silicon Valley, and where he later opened a number, a wide variety of hugely successful businesses, and he continues to be a very successful entrepreneur today. But in addition to all of his other activities in business, he never stopped giving back to the fraternity. He has been a director and officer and president of every AVC in Northern California, in some cases more than once, and he has excelled in each one of these positions. He has become a, an authority within SIG EP on financial management, on fraud avoidance, and best practice. He, is a, he has been a, an, an instructor here. He is a frequent instructor at conclaves, at the Cox Leadership Institute, at district planning meetings, and basically any other place we can get him to come lecture on best practices. Uh, he, is, uh, he has conducted, conducted more than one very detailed, very difficult forensic audits of both uh, chapters uh, and AVCs. He's probably filed more tax returns for fraternity organizations than any other living person uh, in our fraternity. Uh, and I'll just tell you one small anecdote. Chuck and I most recently have served on the California Alpha AVC board. And, and we made a decision a while back to actually hire a professional CPA firm to do our taxes. And Chuck, in going through the tax returns that these professionals uh, had prepared, not only noticed a very significant error, but then basically taught this entire accounting firm the mistake they'd made, what the law required, and how the forms had to be corrected. 
It was just another day in the day in the life of Chuck Stegman as our, as our ABC president. Whenever our fraternity has called on Chuck, he has accepted without reservation and with enthusiasm. He has spent countless hours, most recently helping our California Theta chapter go through a very difficult AAC, as many other brothers in this room did as well, and that chapter has its doors open today in no small part because of Chuck Stegman's loving support and advice. All of the qualities that he demonstrated early on as an undergraduate, this just vast intelligence, this desire to give back, this burning desire to do right and not do wrong, to lift other men up and to lift organizations up is still on avid display in everything that he does. And there's one more thing I'll say about Chuck that you should know. Um, I, I, there's so many wonderful volunteers in our fraternity, and what I'm about to say may describe many of them, but I think Chuck personifies this quality that he never seeks the limelight for himself. He never seeks thanks, he never seeks praise, he never seeks credit. All of the hours that he spends helping our undergraduates, helping other volunteers, all of this he does out of his love for the fraternity and a desire to give back. But Brother Stegman, this evening, you've had a long run, but you can't hide any longer. We are forcing you to come into the spotlight, and it is my tremendous privilege to introduce to all of you the Exemplary Service Award winner for Sigma Phi Epsilon in 2020, Brother Chuck Stegman. A friend of mine was very surprised when I told him that I volunteered for SIGAP. And he asked me, why? And why does a fraternity even need volunteers? So, why do I volunteer? First, it is because it's a chance to give back to an organization that has made so many uh, men grow and become better leaders for America. And I count myself among those who've grown from the fraternity. It's about the many lifelong friendships and certainly, they started in the four years I was in my undergraduate chapter, but they by no means end there. I have made so many wonderful friends, many of whom are here tonight, um, and the, the friendships uh, really make a big difference. But secondly, it's also where I learned many critical leadership skills. I majored in electrical engineering and computer science, but I learned all about sales and marketing from my involvement in recruitment, and I combined those two to create a career in technical marketing. I did well. I actually was able to, to semi-retire when I turned my early 40s, um, and I attribute that to the skills I learned in SIGAP. It's also where I learned to use financial statements to help manage organizations, and that made a big difference when I moved up in the corporate world and started managing other people and managing business units. But most importantly, it's where I learned to create change, to work with teams to make things different. That's a huge need of every company I ever worked for. It's the most important thing in many. It's an invaluable skill that each of you are learning. And unfortunately, you learn the most when things don't go well when there are problems. In summary, I got a lot from SIGEP, and I volunteer to give others the same opportunity. Whenever I start to feel burned out or frustrated, I just focus on the newest men and work to give them something of the experience I've had, hopefully even better. So that's why I volunteer, but what the heck does a fraternity even need volunteers for? Perhaps an analogy will help. A fraternity is like running an obstacle course in a relay race. Each team of execs takes the baton from their predecessors and runs a lap. 
none of them probably has any experience in their role. As just one example, an undergraduate I was mentoring was responsible for a budget that was approaching a half million dollars and had no experience whatsoever at that. All the execs need to complete their, their trip around the lap successfully. If one fails, for example, if the president fails, the entire team can fail. And that's also true for other officers. Think about recruitment, finance, chaplain, all the rest. Whenever I've worked with venture capitalists accessing uh, new startup ventures, one of the main things they look at is the management team. Can you imagine telling a venture capitalist that every member of the current management team is going to be replaced at the same time, within a year, and we're going to do it again next year? Yep, this is a challenging business model. But we make it work. Look around you at the hundreds of people in the room and realize that there are 13,000 SIGEP undergraduates spread across more than 200 campuses right now. We have developed a rich network of support systems to help keep the laps going and the fraternity moving forward. That network of support systems needs everyone and it needs you now and throughout the next 20 years. One reason we are successful is because other teams of SIGEPs have encountered and successfully addressed similar obstacles, perhaps in other years, perhaps on other campuses. My home chapter at the University of Colorado at Boulder, Colorado Alpha, is now in year number 116. That's a lot of laps around the track. And there's over 200 chapters. That's a lot of experience in handling obstacles. And there are several ways that we bring this rich history to bear on this year's lap. First of all, recruiting the best and the brightest. The world-class training. A top-notch professional staff. And the aspect that I'm here to talk with you about tonight, volunteers. Sometimes the way around the obstacles come from lessons learned in the past. But that rich history only goes so far. The world is constantly changing and fraternities must also adapt. Darwin said, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that's most adaptable to change. SIGEP is the fraternity that is most adaptable to change, period. It has taken us from a Johnny-come-lately in the fraternity world to a leader. This fraternity will be different. We learn from the past, but we're not trapped in it. SIGEP is a fraternity with innovation and adaptation in our DNA. Sometimes the answers are to try something new. We've been leaders in the fraternity world in so many fronts, the headquarters facilities, professional staff, housing, opening our membership to all races, religions, creeds, and sexual orientations, ending hazing, academics, risk reduction such as the substance-free legislation. In short, if it's important to the current fraternity world, SIGEP was probably a leader in creating the change. So that's why I volunteer, and an attempt to explain why fraternities need volunteers. But what is there to do? I've visited or worked with over 150 chapters, large and small, housed and unhoused, commuter campuses and residential, new and established. I've had a variety of roles as an undergraduate, a regional director, an expansion director, a chapter counselor, 
as a volunteer and alumni board president, treasurer, secretary, and member, leading the vice president of finance and recruitment tracks at Carlson's, leading financial audits, researching tax and compliance issues, as a mentor to individual execs, leading recruitment clinics, leading district retreats on ABC best practices, serving on, serving on an alumni advisory council, as part of San Francisco's 1901 club, and as a longtime member of the Board of Governors. My point in sharing this list is there are lots of things that need to be done, some that you can help with. I didn't start with all of these, I started with one, and I'd encourage each of you to consider the same. I've been a SIGEP for 43 years. That's a little over one third of SIGEP's existence. During those years, I've watched as SIGEP has changed for the better in many ways. Examples include a real focus on academics, the much improved chapter leadership structure including the strategic role of Chaplain and Standards Board, the Balanced Man Program. All these changes, though, mean we need resources for alumni and volunteers to educate themselves on the current state of affairs and the current strategy. There's a lot for volunteers to do, and there's a lot of resources to help them do it. This weekend, the professional staff, and our district governors, to just name a few. The SIGEPs who inspired me along that 43-year journey and who became my friends are too numerous to mention. That said, I'd like to share three anecdotes about brothers who inspired me. I'll start with Bruce Hazenkamp. You've, uh, everybody in here has heard his son speak, but I worked with him many years ago when he was volunteering on the National Board of Directors. As you've heard, he served as a chapter counselor, a district governor on the National Board of Directors and as grand president. He also had many professional accomplishments to his name. As just one example, he was director of the White House Fellowship Program and served under Presidents Nixon, Ford, and Cartner. He was, when he was volunteering on the board of directors, we had to visit a chapter in distress in Florida and worked together for several days on that. With all those accomplishments to his name, one that he seemed most proud of, and rightly so, was something he did as an undergraduate. At the 1959 Grand Chapter Conclave, he led the effort that passed legislation opening SIGAP to members of any race, religion, or creed. This was before the civil rights changes in 1964. It wasn't easy, but it was the right thing to do. From Brother Hazenkamp, I offer the knowledge that doing what is right brings long-term satisfaction, a classic example of virtue. Brother Hazenkamp, thanks for opening the red doors to so many great brothers. And then there's Milt Mastelier. I doubt anybody in the room has heard of him. He was the first SIGEP alum I met when I joined the Boulder chapter in 1977. He was from a different chapter, Nebraska Alpha, I believe. And he was serving as the treasurer for the Colorado Alpha ABC. I attended most ABC meetings as an undergraduate and he also mentored me when I became the Vice President of Finance, so I got to know him. My first impression of him was that he always said no. He said that a lot. Later in my career, I learned that's common to good financial professionals. <laughs> I thought it was a bad thing at the time, but years later, as I learned more about our chapter's history, I came to a realization. He was the one who had helped Colorado Alpha survive a very difficult period for fraternities, the Vietnam War. When times were good, he had made sure that some money was set aside for a rainy day. And boy, did it rain. 
The savings is what allowed Colorado Alpha to weather a dramatic nationwide drop in fraternity membership and still keep the house. At the start of fall 1977, there were 22 brothers in the house, and it held easily double that. The chapter house uh, could have been lost were it not for his savings. We were bleeding money, but we had it to bleed because of his foresight. From him, I offered the value of bringing a longer-term perspective to the table and the importance of saving set aside for a rainy day. His patient stewardship of the funds over many years was a classic example of diligence. Brother Mastelier, thank you for giving me the chance to be a SIGEP. And that brings me to my close friend, Steve Young, who introduced me. Steve has exemplified the best of SIGEP volunteerism. As you know, he won this same award himself and deserves it far more than I do. Among many other roles, he's served as a past district governor and is current president of the SIGEP National Housing Board of Directors. He does so much and yet is always the first to give credit to others. He's a master at recruiting and empowering volunteers and often uses his special brand of dry humor to help resolve contentious situations. I could say much more, but the point I want to focus on tonight is how he mentors those around him, whether it's an alumnus or a volunteer or an undergraduate. While he is well-versed and highly effective in the mechanics of running a successful chapter, he never lets that get in the way of his personal concern for individual brothers and their well-being. In fact, that concern is an excellent example of brotherly love. Thank you, Brother Young, for constantly modeling what it looks like to live the ritual. I would love to share more stories on other men who I've come to know through this great fraternity, but that will have to be another time. We need more of this, talks between undergraduates and alumni. So much can go uh, happen when we work together, and bad things can happen when we're not talking. We are, after all, on the same team. In closing, I attended my first Carlson Leadership Academy in the spring of 1978. That weekend changed my life for the better. If I've been successful tonight, I've convinced some of you undergraduate brothers to stay involved after you graduate. Build your own SIGEP legacy. While it is true you will help many others by volunteering, you will also have a rewarding experience personally. I am so humbled to receive this honor. The list of previous honorees includes many names I recognize, and quite frankly, I don't feel I belong in their league. But I do what I can because of the great experiences and the great friendships, and because volunteer support is an important part of the continued success of SIGEP. This fraternity will be different. Thank you. <laughs>